Hello, and welcome to my complete Hallowed Sepulchre Guide. My name is Heboxjonge, rank 19 overall with 200 mil XP in all skills, and speedrunner of Maxcapes. So it is safe to say that I know a thing or two about skilling. But you guys came here for the Sepulchre lessons, so let's begin. In this complete guide I will cover all 5 floors and explain the most optimal way of solving every rotation for both XP focus and efficient looting. And I believe that with this guide you can learn how to do Sepulchre and improve your skills in a matter of hours, so that you too can effortlessly zoom to 99 agility. But before we can start zooming, I quickly need to explain some general things about Sepulchre so that it all makes sense when I'm showing you the examples. The first thing is character movement. In this game you run at a speed of 2 tiles per game tick and walk at 1 tile per game tick. Learning this 2 tile pattern is super beneficial for Sepulchre. What I mean by that is, try to think in 2 tile increments. For example when passing through alternating flames, every 2 tiles are safe on the side that just fired. So sometimes you can run further ahead into the flames to save some time. And the 2 tile pattern is also very important to pull off diagonals when dodging darts. And the tile markers that are provided with this video will help you with this. And another thing with movement and darts. Sometimes you are standing too close to the darts, like when standing close to the statues that shoot the darts, that when you move diagonally you get hit. And there are two ways to prevent this. The first is moving in a horizontal line, like on this picture where the light blue tile is the player and the only safe tile to move to is two tiles to the right. However, it can be tricky sometimes to click the correct tile after being teleported for example, since there is only one safe tile in this instance. The other way is much more consistent and safe. When getting near the statues or after getting teleported forward, move to the middle line. Here you can see that the light blue tiles have moved to the middle, and then there are suddenly three safe tiles to move to to dodge the darts. Because if you walk to the sides to avoid the darts, you cannot get hit by the diagonal movement. And I want you to keep this in mind on any dart obstacle to always move to the middle line if things get hairy. Let's play that one more time. I dodge the darts towards the right, and just in case if the right and the middle statue is about to fire again, I move to the middle and then quickly move to the right again with the one walk diagonal to dodge the darts and complete the lap. The second thing is hunting blue teleports. By actively stepping on blue teleports to dodge darts is going to reduce your chance of getting hit at the end and it's gonna bump up your XP rates. The teleports stay active for 4 game ticks and after being teleported you have 2 ticks of immunity to darts and swords, allowing you to skip through them sometimes. You can also anticipate a blue teleport spawning if you haven't seen one active yet for a couple ticks, especially on those 2x3 blue bits. So you can sometimes slow down for a tick or two and jump on the blue to skip through the next set of darts with immunity and clear the section right away. And this is primarily helpful on floor 4 and 5. And the tile markers will guide you to the path with the most amount of blues and the least amount of yellows. This is some more advanced tech, but it is very worth learning. And 3. Tick perfect flames. This is something that you will hear me say quite a lot when explaining the floors, but understanding this is crucial to getting certain skips. And what I mean by tick perfect is that on the same tick that the flames go out, you move into where the flames were. The statue's fires last 4 game ticks on floor 1 through floor 4 and become one tick faster on floor 5. This timing is fairly easy to pick up on, but it can be tricky to do this consistently, but it is very important to be able to do this consistently. So I urge you to try and do this on every set of flames there is, unless stated otherwise. And lastly, before we begin, I need to mention pre-starts. Unfortunately, we still don't have instances at Sepulchre, so this is still relevant. A pre-started floor means that the cycle of all the traps, like the swords and the fires, are now different from a static start. And this is caused by someone else who was on the floor while you spawned in on the same floor where that person is on. And you can easily recognize this if you already see swords and darts and flames all over the place instead of 
only starting to appear after you spawned in on the floor. Other strategies I will explain only work on static floors, and since the timing of the cycle is off on a pre-start, you will sometimes have to wait at certain points where you could have normally kept running, resulting in a couple seconds of time loss per floor. And that is if you can catch the pre-start in time before you get hit by something that's not supposed to hit you on static floors. So when you see another player on your world, either ask them to hop, if you have been there before them, or just find an empty world yourself again. Now onto the setups. I want to keep this short as there's not much to it and you can also find this information on the wiki. If you are doing this for XP only, bring a strange old lockpick if you are 92 agility for the Grand Coffin, stamina potions, and a way to cure poison if you are going to multi-skill arrows or something with an interface, a Cerodomen item for a run recharge after a lap, you can bring the prayer book plus a holy symbol to also cure your poison, and the hallowed ring if you have it also functions as a Sarah item. And lastly, alchemy runes to elk the loot that you get from the Grand Coffin. Graceful doesn't really do anything here, as you are running 99% of the time. So just keep your rate at zero or below. When you are looting, on top of the items just mentioned, bring all the items required for the skill challenges of the coffins that you want to loot. A plank sack is very nice to have here for the bridge obstacle. Again, full graceful, not needed, just need to keep your weight at 0 kilos, so that way you don't look like one of those graceful clones with a bone crossbow. But more info on looting later. And lastly, before we finally enter the poker, 5 plugins to make your life easier in there. First one, tile indicators, and then a true tile. This gives you a much better idea of where your character actually is, this is a must have. 2. Ground markers. Well, it speaks for itself. You can import my markers from the link in the description. Make sure to turn on show on minimap in the plugin though. 3. GPU. This one is really helpful for increasing your render distance to see the darts coming from afar. I have my draw distance set at 60. That is more than enough for Sepulcher. 4. Agility plugin. To highlight the darts and swords for better visibility. And 5, actually I have 2 plugins here, but they are both optional. You can use low detail and then hide lower planes. What this does is makes the, the floors below like all black, so it can improve your PC performance if you experience FPS drops sometimes. And I think low detail just looks better. And then the other one that is optional is visual ticks. This displays a like tick thing on the screen that can maybe be helpful for learning the timings for the flames. I have never used it myself, but maybe some of you find it helpful. And then I have a bonus plugin. If you find yourself struggling learning the two tile pattern when dodging darts, you could try out the plugin called Path Marker. This plugin shows you where your true tile is going to be while running. Personally, I think it makes it a little bit more complicated with all the extra tiles, but if it works for you, then that is all that matters. And now after 8 minutes of information, we can finally start with the real deal and enter Sepulcher. Starting with floor 1. This floor has 4 different paths, all taking around 30 seconds if done properly. For 2 out of the 4 paths, you need to be running on the first tick you spawn on the floor to make the skip. So when entering, you want to be spam clicking your mini web towards the west. So let's start with those two where you need to spam click your mini web. Floor 1, northeast. If you were spam clicking your mini web to the west, you want to pass through the yellow tile far into the flames. The green one is for when you were too slow or a pre start. Then you need to tick perfect these flames to make it past the sword skip. And if done correctly, you can move to the next yellow. And after that, you make your way to the stairs. The green tile here can be used to indicate where the platform is going to be downstairs. This one clocks in at 32 seconds. The other one where you need to spam the minimap is the southeast entrance. If done properly, you do not have to wait for the sword here as you can just squeeze through when the sword is on its way back. After that you move to the yellow tile here. 
Try to take perfectly flames to have an easier time avoiding the darts. You need to avoid 2 rounds of darts here most of the time, and the green tiles can be used to dodge. Sometimes it is possible that you do not need to dodge darts. If on the first round the second or third statue fires, and on the second round the first or the second again, then you can just keep running if you click the stairs. Also here, the green tile can be used to predict the platform so you don't misclick. This one clocks in at 29 seconds. Floor 1, Southwest. For this one, you do not need to be moving on the first tick, but you do want to quickly start running the next tick, so react quickly on the minimap. I didn't miss a tick here in this example, so I need to wait one tick on the yellow tile. But normally, if you didn't lose more than one tick, you want to run into the flames as soon as you see your true tile hit the yellow tile marker. Pass through the next yellow. This one needs to be tick perfect again to make it past the sword. You can look at the sword statue for a cue to start moving. As soon as you see the statue moving, you click. Dodge the darts on the marked tiles to not lose ticks. And then this one clocks in at 32 seconds again. Last of the floor ones is a northwest. This one is probably the easiest as you can miss a couple ticks to still make it to the yellow flame path. Dodge the darts on the marked tiles and do the flames. Only the last one needs to be tick perfect to get the fastest time at 28 seconds. Now let's go down to floor 2, starting with the north spawn. You can choose to spam click northwest on your minimap when going to floor 2 or react quickly to the tiles on the minimap. But this is only needed if you want to do a fancy skip on this one. Manually path to the green tile to save one tick when going over the pillars. If you were quick enough and the first statue is not about to shoot, you can just click the stairs and AFK, as you'll be ahead of the sword. This doesn't save time, but it makes the fastest time more consistent as you can get teleported backwards downstairs and still make the green flames. However, if you lost one tick at the start or if the first statue fired, you do want to wait before the sword and go immediately after it. If you go one tick late, you will have to wait downstairs at the flames. And when downstairs, try to not get yellowed. You want to keep running here, so you will have to stand on two yellow tiles. Because if you walk for one tick, you cannot make it to the second green tile. And then tick perfect the last set of flames for a time of 38 seconds. Floor 2 East. This one starts off with a double tick perfect flame. Well, it is it necessary to do a double tick perfect flame here? You can get away with just one, but dodging the darts will be a little bit tricky, but you can only lose one tick on this floor to make the flames downstairs. Then use the tile markers to avoid the darts. Always path through the green tile before the yellow teleporters. Make sure to keep clicking the stairs in case you get a teleport forward on the blue tiles. And then downstairs, if you were quick enough, you can straight away skip the first set of flames. Then you wanna wait one tick and click the platform at the end. But before you reach the platform, you wanna manually pass through the tile here to save one game tick. This one is 44 seconds, the slowest of floor 2. Floor 2, south. Avoid the darts at the start. You can afford to lose a couple ticks here as you need to wait for the sword anyway. Wait on this tile and move past the sword as soon as it touches the sword tile. If you didn't lose a tick, you want to spam click the yellow tile at the stairs. But if you lost a tick, you want to click the tile to the right of the yellow here. And then follow the tile markers and pay attention at the end to avoid getting hit as you turn the corner. Floor 2 West, arguably the easiest floor 2 rotation. First, click the tile marker all the way in the hallway on the blue teleport and recline for a bit or do some multi-skilling maybe. Then pass through the tile right before the flames. Then one of the most important tick perfect flames, 
If you mess this one up, you lose like 10 seconds right away as you need to wait for the sword to come back downstairs. But if you made it, you want to run behind the sword and path to the tile towards the right. And as soon as your true tile hits the marker, you keep going and path to the other tile marker to save one tick with the platform. This should be 40 seconds. Now on to floor 3. The first floor where it actually gets a little bit more difficult. Let's start with the easier west side. The first section of this side is the most important part. If you make a mistake here or lose too much time, you instantly lose 10 seconds. However, after watching what I'm about to show you, you should be getting the 51 seconds pretty much every time. So to do the first bit of floor 3 west properly, after spawning in, stand on this tile and turn your camera towards the west. Now pay close attention to the timing of when I click. You pretty much want to tick perfect the darts around the corner here. And learning this timing might take a couple runs. Then you have one tick to react and avoid the next set of darts. And be sure to click on the orange tiles to dodge. Then straight away keep moving forward. If you lose a tick here, you still lose 10 seconds. And then just path to the green tile next to the sword after passing the flames. And at normal speed it looks like this. Wait until your true tile hits the tile marker and then carefully click all the green tiles to avoid all yellow teleports here. Then path to the next green tile over here and dodge the darts on or before the orange tile markers. You can lose one tick here and still make the sword. It sounds like a lot but it's actually super consistent with some practice. Then when you are downstairs I have the left side marked as yellow and the right side as green. If you did the previous part well, you will always get down here when yellow is about to fire. Quickly move next to the flames and then run towards the middle. Tick perfect is not required for after the yellow side, but it is for the green side. Just keep that in mind. And then make your way over to the end. If you happen to be in the middle because of the darts being left and right of you, you can path to the orange tile and as soon as your true tile hits this, you can run through the darts either to the left or the right and not lose ticks. This will get you a time of 51 seconds. For floor 3 east we start off a little bit more chill. Just path to the orange tile here. You can lose like 2 ticks and still make it. You can step in one more tile closer to the flames. But if you tick perfect this from this tile. You automatically tick perfect the sword so you can afk longer or do multi scaling. But now the fun starts. Our goal is to either catch a blue teleport or just to not lose a tick while running. And meanwhile not getting teleported backwards with the yellow. The most consistent way of doing this is starting on the green tile and then waiting one tick if the first lane has a dart on it and then move to the first line of the teleporters. And then just keep this rhythm of the first teleport tile, last teleport tile, middle line of the empty space, first teleport tile and so on. I only want you to click like 4 to 6 tiles ahead so you can still easily pull off diagonals since your mouse is still close to your true tile. Here it's very important to know the two tile pattern I was talking about earlier. To know if you were quick enough, look at where your true tile is when the sword is being thrown. If your tile is on the first teleport tile of the last block, you are able to pass the sword and then the flames in one go. If you aren't sure if you were quick enough, it is still worth just trying as you will be placed back in time to just do the flames normally. I'll play it one more time in normal speech so you can see when I click and where. And sometimes you just get teleported backwards outside of your control and the only thing I can say then is better luck next time. And with good technique you can expect to make this skip around 60% of the time I would say. Then when you get downstairs, depending on how the previous part went, you need to do the following. This is also a good way to solve this part of floor 3 if you messed up somewhere or if you were on a pre-started floor. If you made the skip upstairs, you want to see where the darts are and then after the darts have passed you, you want to go to the yellow line here. Then look at the darts and step aside. 
Try to tick perfect these flames to make it to the furthest yellow line. If you lost a tick, count two tiles backwards and stop there. Again, look at the darts and adjust. And then run to the end. And if you happen to be in the middle here because of the darts, wait on the orange tile until the darts are next to you before stepping to the side. Because you will get hit if you go one tick early. If you fail to skip, you will arrive when yellow is about to fire. So do this in order. Step next to the flames, look at the darts and adjust your positioning. Immediately after dodging, run to the middle and wait on the grey tiles. When you tick perfect this set of flames, you do not have to avoid the darts anymore, you can just go towards the end. The floor time on this one will be between 51 seconds if you got the super skip, usually around 54 to 55 seconds for a normal skip, and then a 1 minute and 1 second if you didn't make the skip at all. Now that you know how to do floor 1 to 3 properly, I want you to look at your time left at the end of floor 3. Try to aim for a time of around 4 minutes left. All of the stuff so far is very doable consistently, so at least 3 minutes and 45 seconds left if you got all the slow rotations back to back. If you consistently get under 3 minutes and 45 seconds, that means you need to study these floors more. We have arrived at everyone's favorite part of the poker, floor 4, and specifically floor 4 north. This is the one with the infamous flame wall. This obstacle alone is the crux of the entire floor. Our aim is to stop only once inside the hallway before completing it. So let's begin. Again, you need to either spam click north on the minimap after 4-3 or react quickly to the tiles on the minimap. Losing a tick at the start here greatly reduces your chance for the full skip later on on the floor. Then you want to path to the tile here to avoid all the lightning. And then if you did not lose a tick, you can go to the second row of blues here to skip the sword. After this, you can see the tile markers on the right here of the hallway. Following these will guide you on average on the most amount of blues and the least amount of yellows. Avoiding all yellows is not possible as they are a couple 2x3 yellow tiles. So start on the open lane on the first blue tile. After you see that you are in the correct lane to dodge the darts, click a little bit forward. And then focus on the darts again and adjust your positioning. And click forward again after you see your true tile switch to the correct lane. Repeat this until the end and try to stick to the blue markers. If you see a blue teleport pop up like here, try to go for it. But as soon as you do, keep an eye out on the next set of darts. You do have some immunity here, but try to immediately move to the correct lane again. And then try to stick to the blue markers again. If you need to dodge the last set of darts, either do this before the yellow tiles or on the second row to keep the running pace going. Because every tick matters here. If you manage to do this part quick enough, you now need to judge if you can tick perfect this set of flames. This is probably the hardest part in Sepulchre and will take a lot of practice. You want to pass towards the green tile that says fast. But, however, sometimes your running path doesn't line up with this specific tile. Like in this instance. So as soon as you notice this, and as you see the flames are about to end, you just want to keep running to the next green tile. Even if you are only one tick behind this, then you can't make it to the green tile and you need to count two tiles backwards from green to stay safe. Then tick perfect the next flames to make it out of the whole hallway. If you were not on the middle green tile, you will have to wait an extra time inside the hallway. If this went a little bit too quick for you, then don't worry, I'll explain now what to do when you weren't as quick as this one. So if you happen to be too slow for the green tiles, you can choose to use the orange ones. Or do what I do here and run a little bit further ahead and look closely at where the flames are firing on the ground. Because after a tile has flames on it, the tile will be safe for the next cycle. And try to always tick perfect these flames. And if you were unfortunate enough to get yellowed four times in a row or something, and you are not inside the flames when the left side is firing like this, with also using the first statue, then you will need to wait until after the double flame. 
However, if you were on the green tile here in this instance, you can still make it via the green path, but you cannot lose a tick. So just keep in mind if you see the first statue also doing the flames, then you know that the double flame is coming up soon and you cannot make it anymore if you're still outside. And after the double flame happened, use the yellow markers to get past the flames. And again, if at any moment you fail to tick perfect a set of flames, count two tiles backwards from the tile you are supposed to go. And also keep looking at the flames on the floor for extra safety. And then for the next section with the darts plus teleports, I suggest that you just path in front of the teleport lines and then just skip over them and path normally. It is much more consistent than trying for a hero blue teleport play, which will sometimes just end up getting you hit by the darts. Use the green tiles to not get stunned by the lightning and dodge the last set of darts by making use of the grey tiles to avoid the lightning. Play it safe if you are not sure if you can make it around the corner here. And then go downstairs. Depending on how fast you did the previous parts, the sword will be in different places when you get down here. But there are some general rules to this to figure out what to do when the sword is where. If you arrive next to the sword as it just comes back, you can just send it and use the tiles to path around the darts. However, if the sword has been in the statue for a while already when you turn the corner, you are probably better off waiting a couple ticks and then go after the sword. If the sword is still moving away from the statue as you are running towards it, you should always try to catch your blue teleport in time. Since when you do get hit, if you are too slow, you get placed back at the same time as the sword gets back as well, so you can just go again. Make sure that when you do get teleported forward, you keep an eye out on the darts. If they are close, you can just run through them due to the immunity. But the safer play is most likely to quickly dodge to the side and then clear the hallway. You still want to pay attention to the darts as they move very quickly here. And you can easily get clipped on the corner, which has happened many times to me when I was learning. And then you just want to avoid the yellow line of teleports and take the blue one to finish the floor. At the quickest time possible, this takes around 1 minute and 22 seconds, and a slow one should be around 1 minute and 32 seconds. Floor 4 South, a much more relaxed experience compared to North. And at the start you have one tick to spare when pathing to the tile between the flames, so just react to the minimap. From here, if you tick perfected the flames, you can run straight next to the sword, skipping the lightning. However, if you lost a tick, you want to pass to the green tile before the lightning and then next to the sword. Here it's important to not be too trigger happy when you see the sword being thrown. Wait until the sword hits the yellow tile and then go. If you did this correctly, you can run to the first line of grey tile markers and dodge the darts by making use of the tile markers. If you did this without losing a tick by being slow at the sword or walking for a tick, then you can just click the stairs after dodging these set of darts. And if you missed a tick somewhere, you want to wait at the end before the last set of darts is going to shoot and then dodge them and run to the stairs. If you are tick perfect so far, which is not that hard to do, you want to wait on the blue tile downstairs until you see the sword starting to move. Then you want to run to the middle of the teleporters and wait on the blue tile. You have two chances to get teleported past the sword. If you do not get teleported, spam click the tile northwest of you to not lose a tick when spawning again. And then just click the tile markers to avoid all the lightning and yellow tiles. If you happened to mess up the sword upstairs or the floor was pre-started and you have to wait for the sword, you want to wait until the sword has passed you again and then go to the yellow tile right away. This needs to be tick perfect to work, otherwise you're gonna get hit by the flames. Then just avoid the darts here again. And when you are downstairs and the sword is already like on its way, you do want to go after it and wait before the big patch of blue teleports. And when the teleporters pop up again, you want to wait a little bit and take one of the teleports last seconds to skip through the sword. From here just path around and the darts here move fairly quick, so switch lanes quickly. 
This part has a very easy strategy for consistent clears. Pass through the green tiles while avoiding the darts of course. And then pass through the next line of green tiles. So you walk for a tick and then dodge the darts. Keep running forward and dodge the next set of darts on or before the next teleport. And then lastly stand on one of the three blue tiles at the end to dodge the last set of darts and then turn the corner. Again here skip the yellow line and take the blue to finish the floor. This one ranges from 1 minute and 30 seconds if you got the sword skip from around like 1 minute and 38 seconds most of the time if you don't get the skip. And a good time to aim for by the end of floor 4 is probably around 4 minutes at first when you are still learning a little bit. But once you're getting better you definitely want to have like 4 minutes and 15 seconds or, or more left on average. When you are really trying to go for those 100k hours. Now onto the final floor, floor 5. Keep in mind the flame statue's fires last one tick less than on the previous floors. And getting the timing down is very important right away on the very first obstacle. Doing this part properly makes the first two levels of this floor a piece of cake. So go towards the first yellow and then the second one after the flames. Then tick perfect this one to make it pass the flames in one go. This sets you up nicely for the sword coming up. Wait until the sword hits the statue and use the first and third row of blue teleports. And keep running through the stairs. If you happen to fill the first tick perfect flames, then you want to wait on the last yellow tile. And now you have to tick perfect this one to still make it to the first blue teleporter. And then use the third one as well. And if you failed any of the tick perfect flames, well, good luck in the sword blender then. And then downstairs we have one of the hardest parts for beginners, but it's actually super easy if you keep these three things in mind. Don't click too far ahead and dodge as soon as possible. Actively hunt for blue teleports here, especially at the end to skip all the yellow tiles and the darts. And keep going back to the middle lane if possible for easier dart dodging. I'll show a couple examples of how to solve this part. Actively hunting blue teleports to pretty much skip the entire part. And those last two blue tiles are your best friends in dire situations, so definitely stick to those. This long flame hall looks hard at first, but if you can keep the green, yellow and red tiles apart, you should never get hit here. So just pick the path that is open when you arrive here. And keep running through the lightning. And after that, keep sticking to the color that you started on. If you tick perfect the last green and the statue is about to throw, just keep running, you won't get hit. And if you were on yellow, you can tick perfect this one to make it out of the flames in one go. The red path requires tick perfect only, but it's optional to take if you were just too slow for the yellow path at the start. The red path is a couple flame cycles faster than waiting on the green path. And then try to take at least two rows of teleports, either the first or the second one, and the fourth or the fifth one. And then immediately skip to the side to avoid the sword. If you arrive at the sword when it's already far away, just wait at the first or second row and teleport through the sword as it is coming back. Now we just need to tackle the final two obstacles to reach the Grand Coffin. And I probably made the most mistakes on the second to last part with all the teleports, lightning and darts. But I have a fairly foolproof method of tackling this that doesn't require a teleport forward. Start off dodging the darts and then start on one of the green tiles to dodge the lightning. Then you have to step on one of the yellow rows unfortunately. Keep running and make sure that you skip over the single yellow row and onto the blue row. Then just continue towards the green tiles before the lightning. Look at the statues and dodge before you clear the corner. It is very worth here to get teleported forward, so if you happen to get teleported, look at what I'm doing here. Step in the middle, dodge, 
Step in the middle again and dodge again. It is very easy to misclick at the end if you have to move from left to right or the other way around. So use the tile markers and use the middle lane as well. For the final obstacle, all you need is a little more confidence. Only stopping once inside the flames will greatly reduce the chance of making a mistake and getting hit by the dart or flames. Furthermore, it's important to know where your true tile is going to line up in the lightning part when coming out of the flames. So you can pull off diagonals more easily to keep the momentum going. If you were on a tile that was safe after the yellow side fired, your running path lines up with the side lanes of the lightning. And when coming from a green safe line, your true tile lines up with the middle lane. And of course, always try to keep an eye on the incoming darts, so you can switch lanes ahead of time. The flames in the middle aren't too exciting, just pass them when you can and keep dodging the darts. What can be nice is to divide this section up into two tile increments in your head, just like how the lightning tiles are to keep your running pace going while dodging darts. I found that putting more tile markers down here only brings more confusion to where to stand to be safe from the flames. But you can use the path marker plugin here to help you out. Then just dodge the lightning again with using the tile markers to skip over them. And try to get at least halfway into the next flame section on the yellow or green line. Because if you're gonna spend more than one pass here in the flames, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna get hit by the dart since they move so quick. And after the flames end, click forward while looking at the darts and dodge accordingly because you only have one or two ticks to dodge here. And using the middle lane here is again very useful to dodge the dart with just walking one tile diagonally. See how I'm already hovering my mouse over the green tile while looking at the statues and then immediately switch to the right lane while moving forward already. And then wait one tick in the middle lane so I can just easily walk to the right to avoid the darts. And honestly, the best way to learn this final obstacle is just to send it. Try to get as far into the flames as possible, while trying to keep an eye on the dart so you can pull off diagonals well ahead of time. And then lastly I wanted to show that if you happen to arrive when the green statue is about to fire, you can walk one tile in since there is no flame and then you can just full send the whole thing. And then you have to wait on the middle flames. But if you take perfect these flames in the middle, then you can get into the same position as you were at the start with the green flames and full send this whole thing as well. But dodging here needs to be done on the yellow tiles. But this is like very advanced. And then just make your way over to the Grand Coffin and loot it. You can also make the quick exit option on the pillars less clickable with room light if you hold shift. A goose floor 5 time to aim for is around 2 minutes and 20 seconds if making no mistakes. And I want you to try to gradually lower that to 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Or even lower to a tick perfect 2 minutes and 2 seconds. And the overall lap time should be like 6 minutes and 30 seconds when you get the hang of all the floors. And if you manage to get that down to an average of 6 minutes and 10 seconds, you are now getting 100k XP per hour with looting the ground coffin. Let's talk looting. I'm going to keep this fairly short as there's only a couple things to look out for when looting. Pretty much every floor and obstacle stays the same even if you are looting. Sometimes you do have to wait a little longer at a sword or something, but... This is pretty self-explanatory when you are in Sepulchre. So a question I get often when streaming is, at what level is Sepulchre worth it? Sepulchre is worth to do on all levels. After you have unlocked it, of course. So even on floor 1. Because the XP per hour is higher than rooftops. However, looting for marks or GP is never worth it on floor 1. If you are a main account, the best way to get the marks for the hallowed items is to loot the floor 2 prayer obstacle, and the floor 3 portal and prayer 1. The tier of the enchant matters pre hallowed focus. Buy the items in this order. Hallowed focus for the portals, symbol for the prayer obstacle, and then hammer when you get to floor 4, and then the ring, 
And lastly the grapple, because you should never loot other grapple obstacles other than floor 5. For irons it is slightly different, getting vampire dust is not worth it. So only loot the floor 3 portal for your marks and then buy the focus first. The hammer when you get to floor 4, then the ring and lastly the grapple as well. After you have the hallowed focus you can just use any enchant spell. To save some time when looting, you want to manually path in front of every portal before clicking on it. Also on the way back, this saves you 2 ticks in total. This is not needed for the bridge and prayer obstacles. When running towards the grapple on floor 5, equip your crossbow if you were using a fire staff ahead of time. And click on the northern pillar, aka the one closest to you. And after swinging, path to the north side of the coffin and loot. Then, from this tile, click on the same pillar again to save a couple takes. Otherwise, you gotta do like that weird dancing pattern in front of the, um, the grapple thing. Using the plank sack plugin from the plugin hub is a good way to keep track of the planks inside of your plank sack. So that you will lower the chance of you missing the final coffin on floor 5, since that is the one with the double roll. The best coffins to loot when keeping both XP and GP in mind. For mains it is just all of floor 4 and 5. Floor 3 isn't really worth looting since you can still roll the lower tier table which is not good. You also get way more than enough marks to green the collection log if going for 99 agility here. So floor 3 is also not worth for the marks. Irons on the other hand want to do almost the same. But skip the prayer one at the end of floor 4, since again the dust is not worth getting. Here are some numbers for XP per hour and how many marks you can expect per hour. If you're only looting the grand chest, you're gonna get around 95 to 100k XP per hour. Which means 8 laps per hour, which is 75 hallowed marks per hour. If you are pre-92 agility and you're looting floor 4, then it is around 77k an hour and around 120 marks per hour. And if you don't loot the prayer one on floor 4, the XP pretty much stays the same, but the marks get cut in half. So irons get 60 marks per hour here. And if you loot all of floor 4 and 5, you get around 88 to 90k XP per hour and around 230 marks per hour, depending on your skill level. The full collection log plus black graceful is only... 4260 marks, so with looting all of floor 4 and 5, you'll get this done in like 20 hours, and only 1.7 mil agility XP. So I don't want to see you loot floor 3 grapples for more marks, especially not without a hallowed grapple. And if you looted the grand coffin only for 75 marks an hour, you would still get more than enough if you did 92 to 99 agility here for the full collection log, plus black graceful. And the GP per hour varies from more than 2 mil an hour at floor 5 to like 4 to 500k on floor 4 and even lower than that on floor 3. I've added a nice calculation for Iron Man to figure out how much loot and runes they can expect from doing X amount of XP at Sepulcher. But I think that is all there is to the hell at Sepulcher I have to offer you guys. If you want to know more about multi-skilling in Sepulcher, then check out episode 9 for my Ultimate Iron Man speedrun series, where I go more in depth about the Red Axe and other things. However, it is not out yet if you watch this video on the week of release, so keep that in mind. If you learned something, then please leave a like and a comment with what you want to see me explain next. And check the playlist on screen for more guides and check my links in the description if you want to follow or support me. Anyway, I'll stop talking now, take care.